to be honest, out of all three of them, I'm pretty sure Yuki Mas is probably going to be the hardest to get the key from, honestly. Uh, inhuman uh, bloodlust and murderous tendencies abound. I descend the stairs, opening the cellar door. The first time I visited this room, the smell of blood from within was nearly suffocating. Now, the entire house reeks of it, the blood bleeding from the walls, and I've started to go numb to the odor. There's no one here. Am I in the wrong place? No, this is where the where I'm on the quote unquote I'm a monster, the beast as he calls him himself, I'm a, likes to reside. Right the last time we've seen him. D -d Don't worry about it, he's here. He's hiding in one of the wine barrels, all the little prankster. I began exploring the cellar, hoping to maybe find the key hidden away or abandoned it somewhere. It reached my hand out to investigate one area. Oh hi. A human or beast form. <laughs> a shadow leaps out of the thick darkness. Hi. <laughs> it's so swift I have no time to react. My body freezes in place. Hi. A shadow stands before me. Can shadows harm us though? <laughs> Holding the tip of blade mere inches from my face. A key. You have a key. Yes, I do. I have a little, little, little special little key ring. Jingle, jingle, jingle. <laughs> I do? Yes? Cold sweat trickles down my back. My voice is shaking, and there's no hiding it. Knife. The shade appears to be glaring at me, though I cannot make out its face. After a few seconds, it withdraws its blade. Let me see it. The boy's key. Did he give it to you? In the Rose Garden, yes. I swear to God, if you steal it. Are you two... acquaintances? Not through um, uh, any special means, just by circumstance. How could that be, though? You were from a completely different era and country. Well, we're now under all, under one single roof, okay, Michelle? Okay, Michelle? Does that not, not make people enough acquaintances, honestly? Who... Who are you? I'm... No, never mind. I don't care about names. I only care about what form you take. Who you are is irrelevant to me. Are you human now? Technically, I'm pretty sure he's always human. Although, well, you're pretty sick if you like turn into a monster or a beast, honestly. If you're speaking my nature, then no is the only answer I can give you. You didn't kill me, though. If you want to, you can easily skewer me where I stand. Oh, if that's what you want, I'd be happy to oblige. Maybe that was the wrong thing to say. <laughs> what did you come here for? For your key. I came to ask if you would give it to me. It's got a little, little keychain. <laughs> you mean to open that door? I need to get to them to the tower, yes. I see. Take it. Wait, really? Wow, that felt anticlimactic. <laughs> okay. The man's shadow tosses the key at my feet. I swear, if this, this is better be the real fucking key. I'm not quite sure what to think. I wonder just because, like, uh, we already have Mel's key, then I'm, uh, it made this getting this key easier. I wonder what, I wonder what would happen, honestly, if uh, we did uh, this one first, actually. I didn't expect him to give it up so readily. What? Take it. I won't stab you in the back while you're bending over. I thought you were supposed to hold on to this at all costs. I no longer have any reason to guard that key. In the past, I might have severed your head from your shoulders the moment you mentioned it, though. What point in the past? Centuries! What's, what's a bigger word than centuries, honestly? That's a question. I wish I knew the answer to. Hey, do you know why I'm here? this place is, when it is. Why can't I get out of here? What's happened to me? Why are more people coming in so I can kill them and, 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 and eat their corpses? I... Tell me! I have no idea what's going on! Not a single goddamned idea! Neither do I. Get out. To the key and get out of here! Get out! I can't bring myself to say anything to the enraged shadow, so I follow his command, picking up the key. 
and departing the cellar. Well, I thought that would be him uh, harder. I swear to God, Mel's is the hardest one. He's pretty much the, the most cowardly person in the trio, honestly. Wow. Wow. Okay. I thought I was dead for a second. This makes two, though. What could have happened between these people? The painting mentioned a past with them. And Morgana spoke of the wicked men she cursed. The only thing I think of, honestly, will definitely just reincarnation, theme bob stuff and all that. <laughs> Which, I don't know, just means like, oh, the curse extends past him up. I don't know, like, bloodlines, honestly, if, uh... And I'm, uh, an ancestry and family, honestly, then, for some reason. You can just see the harbor person. Oh my gosh, you were you were born and died in Europe, but oh my gosh, you your spirit then carried all the way over to Japan and were born and, and raised there. That means, oh, you're still the same person. You're still the same person. Doesn't matter, or doesn't even matter that I'm a uh, reincarnation and all that. Uh, you bad. You bad, sir. <laughs> like, okay. Does that mean they did something awful enough to earn Morgana's spite? Right now, though, I must push onward. If I'm not mistaken, the final key should be in that room. The room with uh, uh, the billiards table? Or pool table, if you want to want to be less fancy. What is billiards, anyway? <laughs> it's, it's way after your time, okay? I should get moving. <laughs> Man, if only if there was a tragedy that took place in the modern day, I'm pretty sure you'd be even more weirded out and confused. <laughs> Once I have this key, I can get into the observation tower. I'm most certain Morgana's waiting for me there, with Giselle. So I gather my resolve and hurry to the next room, the last room, not wanting to take even a second longer than necessary getting her back. Billards. I can hardly believe my eyes when I step into the den. In the middle of the room is a large, rectangular table with green fabric. Several balls roll across the surface and perch in one corner. Looking down the floor is her. Giselle. Giselle! The question of why she's here never crossed my mind. It's a figment of your imagination. It's, it's taunting. All I feel is elation to see her once more. There's no room for anything else in my head. I swear to God, if you trip on a billiards ball, it's just conveniently on the floor. I run over to her, put my hand on her shoulder. Oh, thank goodness you're all right. And turn her toward me. Uh, what? G Giselle? Giselle! Yeah, it's uh, here to give you psychological torment. Wee hee, yay, yeah. I shake her, causing her head to droop lifelessly. What, she was just slumped over perfectly sitting on the edge of the table? Wow, I'm, uh, Morgana certainly am, uh, did her time to, um, uh, make sure the body just, uh, stays upright the entire time. Wow. There's no backing to it on the table or anything. It's just sitting there for no reason. I'm pretty sure it slumped forward and fall to the ground. Okay. Magic. There's not a trace of light in her unmoving eyes. Uh, why, Giselle? Why? Say, say something, Giselle. Say anything, please. This, no, this can't be. You, you can't be. He can't be. My mind goes blank. I can't catch my breath. The world is hazy. Why is Giselle? And why did I find her like this? Why, I swore I would do anything. I swore I'd never lose you again. No, 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 this can't be. A thought crosses my dazed, despair-wrought mind. It's probably nothing more than a vain hope, but... Not a drop of blood spilled from my breast. That's right, she doesn't bleed. You faker! You liar! So this can't be her. This isn't her. Or maybe... Maybe Morgana has the power to alter Giselle's very nature. Kill her with a flick of her wrist. Yeah, it sounds about right. No, I don't even want to think about it. There's no hope to be found down that path. All I can do is pray. I mean, after that point, the next thing you can do is mostly just um, uh, go arrest your mics and like just trying to tear down Morgana from bit by bit, piece by piece, spirit by spirit, and all that. 
All I can do is pray, beg for her to still be alive, or if alive isn't the right word, herself. My prayers bring me back to reality, which is when I realize, huh? There's something hard pressed against the back of my head. I hear a harsh, metallic click. What did it? Oh my god, Jacopo was like, nah, I don't, I don't want to give this key, uh, and just, just gunshot wound? Okay, hi. A piercing bang rips the, through the air as I drop to the hard floor. My ears are ringing painfully. Through the cloud of smoke and confusion, I see a man's silhouette. Hmm. Missed. Uh, eh, eh. It takes several moments for me to recognize the object in his hand as a gun. Not only because it's draped in shadow, but because I've never seen one with my own eyes. <laughs> Had I not witnessed what they were capable of through the stories, I would not have understood how terrifying they were. Not a problem, though. I completely forgot the, the voice they gave him, so I'm, uh, whatever voice it is. I'll finish you with the next one. Now you hold still, boy. Start running around like a rat and I can't guarantee you painless death. Wait, hold on a second. What are you trying to kill me for? Because you make too much goddamn noise, that's why. Don't tell me you're the one who... What? I turn my gaze to the large table. Cell isn't there. The ghost! It must have been an illusion after all. The realization sent a wave of relief through me. I still have a gun in my face, though. Curious man you are. Does the table warrant your attention more than me? I mean, it's green fabric and you're just, you know, all draped in shadows. It's it definitely look more interesting. I have a request. Could you give me the key to your possession? That's all I need, and then I'll leave and stop making a racket. I'm not sure you understand your predicament, boy. Because we think you're in any position to be asking favors, you're dumber than you look. Ha! First off, I don't even know what key you're talking about. Yeah, plain dumb. I don't believe that. You're there two at keys. You telling me they gave you their keys? Sounds like they really do know each other. See for yourself. I believe you should recognize these. Are you collecting them to enter the tower? Are you going to see Morgana? There seems to be a hint of tension in the man's voice. Though I can't see his face, I can sense the waves forming within him. I brace myself for either rejection or hot lead. The apparition gives me neither. Take me with you. You have the other two keys, don't you? You can open the door. Bring me to the witch. Wait, slow down. What do you plan to do when you see her? What do you think? She has to... She... Has to... Has to what? <laughs> As Lily just now, Mom Morgana like, kind of has them all in their um, uh, grip that I'm... Uh, the second he said that, he's um, uh, completely just... Uh, Incapacitated. He's gone. Oh, yeah, look, immediately look at that. She has to what? What was he trying to say? Oh, he, literally when he vanished, the key dropped and fell to the ground. Okay, well, the third and final key, key get. Wow. <laughs> On the floor where the shade stood is a new key. Curious, though, I'm about, I am about his last words. This makes three. I have all the keys now. Rule of threes. <laughs> Are you trying to rile me up, Morgana? Are you enjoying yourself up there, showing me these phantoms and watching me squirm? I mean, yeah, technically that's her, that's her MO, so yeah. Just you wait. I'm on my way. I give the room a brief once over before making my way back to the chapel. To be honest, I thought each of the doors would actually be just as long as uh, Mel's, but okay then. <laughs> Alright. All three keys, insert, twist, turn, unlock, padlock, unchain, open door. The keys fit perfectly in the openings in the lock, and when I insert the last one, it clicks open. The chain sealing the door falling to the floor. They're waiting beyond this door at the top of the stairs. I start pondering what I can even do in a face-off against Morgana, which sends a sh nervous shudder down my spine. I'm not going to back down, regardless, but she is a witch, and I'm a mere human, well, formerly human, well, still, it's, it, it, it's still a, a cool form, okay? Everyone wants, 
Like, I'm pretty sure everyone would like, be, it'd be cool to be a ghost for a bit, right? <laughs> Just, like, stick your own hand through your own stomach. And out through your back. That'd be cool, right? If not disturbing for yourself in the first time. I'm not a master swordsman, nor do I wield a gun. But do you know self-defense? Do you know the karate's or the, the Aikido's and all that? Do you know how to do that? And nothing at all with which to fight her. You have fists. <laughs> I still have to confront the witch, though. No matter what. As laughably reckless, as foolish I may be, I have no other option. Onwards. I place my hand to the door, preparing to climb the tower when I, where I once spent my last breath. Giselle locked safely away in the chamber at the top. The tower where I first met the witch. No hesitation. Open. Dang, is the blood just flowing down the stairs like a waterfall now? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not doing the sound effects again. Just one single hiss. Hiss. I did too. Okay, sorry. There you go. The sound of blood streaming down the stairs echoes off the stone walls. Although, I have begun growing numb to the house's otherworldly ornamentation, the sight of a seemingly endless river of blood flowing down the spiral staircase as it chilled through me. Man, if only you knew what elevators were, you would probably be, um, uh, scared shitless from the scene watching The Shining. <laughs> Every step I, I climb makes a splat. Splat noise. When I reach a window, I look out to see a churning, reddish-black fog. Oh, now this brings me back. You climbing these stairs alone. Oh, just like old times. Wow. Nostalgic. Morgana. I waited so, so long for someone like you to show up. So it's a despair to resurrect me. Give her back. But now, I don't see it in you. I don't feel one bit of intense hopelessness anymore. Give her back. Oh, and here I thought we were cut from the same cloth. Morgana? Oh, yes, yes, I'll give her back. If you can make it to me without losing yourself. I will not give up. Doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> Looking up, I can't see how far the stairs extend. It's just a gaping blackness. So I have no way of knowing for sure whether I'm getting any closer. It's a never-ending staircase! <laughs> around and around. Around and around. Around and around. Just gonna keep going up and up and up and up, uh, extending inf infinitely and infinitely like that, uh, a lighthouse in Yuzumaki. Which again, oh my god, the first episode was great for that anime, but everything else is terrible. I just gotta put that in. <laughs> my god, they had so much hope. Uh. Beneath me, the Blood River traces the same path in reverse. I still wonder if the like, staircase even does end. Wait, are you saying the blood is now just, like, going up the stairs instead? Okay, that's cool. If not just eternally you retracing my own steps. But I continue climbing regardless. It's all I can do here. Put one foot right in front of the other and hope I can make it to the top and then be walking out the door. Morgana, what is this place? What did you do to it? What is it? Why, it's the man she lived in for a decade, of course. Oh, you silly little goose. You look at this and tell me it's the same house. What's with the blood everywhere? It's the blood from all the, all the lives lost and from connected to the house itself, you know. You know how it is, you know how it is. In the three shadows. Now, now, my dear, no need to raise your voice. No need, no need at all. And you're being impolite, one question at a time. Answer me. What is this place? Oh, that's immaterial. If I were to give you an answer you found satisfying, what would that knowledge do for you? Closure. Your objective is to reach the top of these stairs and rescue Giselle. Nothing more, nothing less. Isn't that right? Or by chance, uh, have you taken an interest in me? Despite never once asking me about myself before. My gut tells me that without knowing what this place is, without even the briefest glimpse of its nature, I won't be able to safely get her back. Without knowing what I'm up against, I don't stand a chance. I can read your thoughts, you know. Shit! Please tell me the mansion, Morgana. About yourself. What are you, Morgana? I am Morgana! <laughs> a witch. That's not what I'm asking. Why do you the powers you do? What are you? Oh, yes, yes, I get it. Fishing formation. 
Humans feel a need to attach names to things and phenomena they don't understand. Oh, I understand that feeling very well. Eh, it also comes to just normal labels, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why I'm sure you'd rather be disappointed when I reveal the truth. What do you mean? It's just a house. <laughs> what I mean is, I'm an ordinary human. That's not possible. The house itself was haunted. The person is still a person. You just mean to believe a human created this illusion? Or, you know, they just have, they could tap into the power of the mansion itself, honestly. Oh, then are you saying a magician or a wizard like you might see in a fairy tale? I would believe that over you being human. Yeah, we're, di we're just going straight into the theming of um, uh, Yukimaza, um, uh, human, inhuman, all that. Oh, we, oh, we. Think back then, would you? Our colored's precious, precious time together. Did I ever once use magic? Did I control fire or wind? Did I create illusions? No, I did none of that. I mean, because I'm a... Uh, he wasn't a captive audience. <laughs> because I could not. To you, when you were alive, I suppose you could say... I was not but a simple ghost. A rather mischievous but otherwise powerless spirit. <laughs> And I was nothing more to those three men either. The witch, Morgana, was never anything but a wretched phantom haunting this old house. But then, how do you explain this? Oh, Michelle, my dear, we're the same beings we once were. We're different. We're different when we're the more the realm of light, the air of the living. You figured that much out, though, haven't you? That you're already dead. I mean. That was kind of fucking obvious, but okay, wow. Yes, I know. I know it couldn't possibly be alive. Yet you still view this world through the lens of the living. You make no effort to see it as the land of the dead. So tell me, why would you think the realm of the living and the dead are one and the same? Though the worlds behind each door were so vibrant, the mansion itself never had any color. This is why we need paint. <laughs> they were the memories of the past, the land of the living, of the times forever lost to us. Our lives have already come to an end, my dear. Every last soul within these walls is dead. This is the world that lies beyond the end. It is my world. This is the afterlife. Why get caught up in the minutia? None of us had a future. So what reason is there for you to desperately obsess over taking Giselle back? Just like you. She's... Longs instead. Pfft. She's a walking corpse. It's not like you didn't already know, but hearing her say it... Okay, uh, alright. Okay, wow, everyone here is dead. Wow, we uh, get the confetti poppers. Okay, T1, anyway. It's like a kick to the gut. Dead or alive, she still lives on within this mansion. This house, and my spear found its way back too. Why then should I not wish for her to have a future? No matter what form it may take. No matter if my choice is here, erase her from this world entirely. Having seen what lies beyond the door in her heart, what happened all those hundreds of years? I can never let her remain here with you, trapped in this world bereft of light, drifting aimlessly for all eternity. <laughs> So determined you feel the need to raise your voice. You're not going to budge in that point, I see. I ask you this again, Morgana. Please, tell me about yourself. How did you become a witch? How did you end up attached to this house? I want to hear your story. You honestly want to know more about me? Wow, we, encyclopedia. I do now, yes. <laughs> now. Oh, but not for me. For her, though, right? I mean, yeah, it's kind of obvious. Oh, don't be shy now, don't be shy now. It's the truth, isn't it? Besides, if you did say it was for me, not her, I might die of laughter. Well, as you wish. You have seen many tales of people's lives since arriving here, and I guess now you shall see mine. Well, I ask you this. Will you writhe in despair with me? Will you endure maddening agony for me? Will you know pain enough to make you howl? 
Will you face despair again and again and again? And said before, if that is what you want from me. Oh, well then let me tell you something though, my dear. It will not be as easy to watch as you imagine. That was my first thought, honestly, was you'd be like right in her shoes anyway, so yeah. Now that you reclaim yourself, you'll be able to feel all my pain as if it were your own to resonate with it, even uh, the deathly agony part. Resonate with it? Striking every single nerve in your own body. You no longer have your little guardian with you either. My guardian. She was always protecting me. Oh, so she was feeling all of it. Oh, yay. <laughs> You'll have a wonderful time, I'm sure. It's a tale that can only take place in the era of miracles and spirituality. Wondrous and weird, senseless and stupid, hopelessly tragic as you will a well or aware. Will you watch it with me? Darkness shadows. <gasps> as soon as the final lord leaves your mouth. I'm engulfed in darkness. I didn't even give a moment to brace myself. And I trip and fall down the stairs and land in the blood. Uh, uh, the tower still the tower stairs come up beneath me. It turned into a giant slide going around and around. Wee! <laughs> my feet had nowhere to go. As I'm being battered by the roaring blood river, my consciousness melds with another. Wee. What is this, the seventh door? You know this this is technically not even a door. <laughs> How about I'm uh, the first blood river? <laughs> I carry within me the child of God. That's where it all began. The words of one foolish woman determined the course of my entire life. Before I was even born, my fate was decided. Did your claim come from faith? Was it a way of escaping reality? Did you do it for money or fame? I don't know. She's holding a sword from the looks of it. I've been visited by an angel of the Lord. The village where she lived had suffered from years of poor harvest. It had been months since the last rain, and all the villagers prayed desperately to be blessed with succor. I'm a child, though I've known no man. There's no men in the village that you are, honestly? Okay. So proclaimed the pregnant woman in the midst of, her, of the drought. The day of my birth, the very moment I let out my first cry, a heavy rain fell down upon the village. The storm quenched the parched earth, nourishing the crops and saving the village. The villagers were astounded, for they had thought the drought that would never end. As plump drops of rain poured down upon the village, they gathered around newborn me in exultation. You will carry all our hopes of mankind now, child, only on your lone, single, weak shoulders. <laughs> She is the child of God! Perhaps there would be more wonder at claiming I had magical powers. Perhaps it would make a better story if I were to say there were higher force involved. But all those years later, here's what I truly think. No. It was nothing more than a fluke. What, it's- what, are you telling me like- like I'm a- <laughs> Well, either the rain was coincidental, which it most likely is, or I don't know, someone performed some- I don't know, some ritual on a scene and made the rain fall down. What was- okay. It's an improbable stroke of luck, I mean, yeah. An unbelievably fortunate accident for Mother and the village, and an indescribably unfortunate accident for myself. I am a child, though I have known no man. <laughs> As if that's even possible. Maybe she had fooled around with a man who had gone and abandoned her. She spouted those lies, convinced herself it had never happened. And uh, okay, I'm, I'm imagining like what happened if the guy showed up again. None of the village men claim any claim to be my father. Perhaps he was someone else's husband. As such, he couldn't reveal himself, as adultery is a sin in the eyes of God. That'd be uh that'd be interesting, honestly, from uh a story that I'm uh, I guess the holy child is was made from uh I guess sin, honestly. Huh. The girl they th were praising as the child of God was indeed not more than the ordinary daughter of a wretched woman time though I thought differently I mean yeah I feel like you're gonna be growing up like underneath them uh, I guess around the village like look at you with reverence and uh, your crazy mom I'm assuming from the sound of it you probably think you definitely did like you have some sort of like majestic fate or like destiny or whatever waiting you in the future so I'm um, uh, yeah 
I believe my mother's words. Convinced I was a saint. Plus, you know, usually the whole thing is like, you trust your parents at first until um, uh, they do something wrong or bad or you just grow up. Eh. And it gave me a sense of duty, a purpose, rather than superiority. As a doubt or God, I believed it was my responsibility to help anyone in need. So every day, I prayed. Did you only pray or did you just, did you actually help people? I asked my father what I could do, what I was meant to do. Not everyone is equally good, however. There will always be someone who lends their ear to the devil's whispers. One man claimed I was the daughter of a charlatan. He shouted for all to hear, If you really are the child of God, then perform a miracle for us. Could he have been any more unreasonable? I'm just a child, I don't know how to do miracles yet, it's not my power yet. <laughs> miracles are neither magic nor parlor tricks. They, real they are realized the power of faith. A lowly villager has no place demanding God prove his own divinity is the height of arrogance. But the man refused to heed my words. So having no other choice, I contemplated what I could do to show him I was indeed a saint. In blood was a spark of my inspiration. Okay, from all the sound of it and how the like, all this being um, uh, f um, uh, I guess phrased and parched out, this is a, gonna be a very short story, honestly. Mostly just uh just the, the very short one just doing setup then just explaining who the three guys were, and then, you know, I'm, uh, possibly, like, I'm, uh, her being killed by the hands of the three of them, honestly. That's what it sounds like, anyway. Because we're not getting to, like, I'm, uh, sort of in point of view of her, of her time and when she was alive yet, so, I'm, uh, yeah, that's probably what's happening. The blood was a spark of my inspiration. Michelle? Yeah, but it was a literally just narration to her anyway, to him anyway, sorry. Michelle, the time when I lived and the time when you lived were not so different. Our views and beliefs of the world are very much the same. Oh boy, we're doing that um, uh, hero and protagonist thing if I'm uh, we're not so different, you and I. Well, like, hmm. It's usually better when there's at least some commonality between a hero and villain, even if, like, literally it's only just a, um, uh, what was it? Like, uh, for example, um, uh, the villain does something terrible, but then the hero just imagines, like, they've done something equally terrible. So they think there's like a sort of a um, uh, connection there and they're despairing over it or like there's that whole thing of like I don't want to be you honestly and they do everything in the power to not do that but, you know that whole sort of foil anyway but like I'm more curious about the whole thing of like was it literally just Michelle walking into the observation tower when he first got to the house or when he's just exploring honestly and like his despair or hopelessness honestly just brought her to life or he's like nah i'm bored i'm just gonna oh here's a here's a demonic ritual book let me just um uh slam down i'm uh use my own blood and ritual circle revive a spirit oh shit well now there's a ghost in my head for all eternity i shouldn't I'm, I'm not gonna even do that anymore put books away nothing else and then for just years that i'm uh he was here on the sea for a solid decade nothing spooky ever happened just that ghost more god just in his head just like telling just like literally just feeding him just um uh, i don't know just like saddening saddening thoughts or just like him uh listen to me listen to me do this do that and just nothing else like the spirit is even strong enough to even possess him or do anything not even a polar guy's level just she was just there in his head the entire time and nothing else for who knows how long for that many for those many years just making his life a living hell honestly making him just more and more sad <laughs> yeah. our views and beliefs of the world are very much the same so you should understand that in our time blood was seen as unclean is a dreadful thing but with diseases which is why we drain the blood from animals and purify the flesh before consuming it yeah that makes sense I've also been reading, like, some, like, fanfics and stories, like, that delve more into, like, his blood rituals and stuff like that. And, like, symbolism around that as well. That's a different take I haven't heard before. So, huh. Interesting. But being a saint, my blood would have been different. What, consume the blood and you'll be purified too? What, what my tears or whatever? Okay. <laughs> By the blood of the saints who came before me, mine we blessed, or so I thought, you think. I believed it would be able to cleanse people's impurities. <laughs> oh, oh no! Just bleed into a bottle and just spread your blood honestly onto people's wounds and make sure it doesn't. And I'll, no, of course, of course not. Those people won't get diseases. Of course not. Of course not. Just rub deeper into the wound. Deeper into the wound. God damn it. 
For my demonstration, I chose an elderly woman afflicted with a terrible disease. She was on her deathbed, and no one thought she would live for longer than another day or two. The woman was overjoyed when I came to visit her. Sincerely believed me to be a holy servant of the Lord, she gathered all the strength she could muster to climb from her bed and kiss my feet. I felt an intensely deep love for this woman. I placed my hands upon her cheeks, and with all the kindness of my heart, my beloved sister, partake of my blood. The woman agreed without a glimpse of hesitation, and so I pricked it through my finger with a knife, with the blood drip into her mouth. Within three days, her health had improved enough for her to get out of bed unassisted. Seeing that, no one in the village doubted my powers any longer. Can't tell if that's literally just a mouse, so lucky, or just whatever. If, like, she does more acts of this endlessly, like, like several times over, like, is it even really a coincidence anymore? In fact, the man who accused me of being the daughter of a charlatan was subsequently punished for his sins. Was he killed? <laughs> he received much, much deserved retribution for challenging the daughter of God, for mocking her. But of course, being a saint, I forgave the man. He in turn repented and changed his ways, worshipping me as a true child of God. Now, I'll be honest with you, I was ecstatic. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure anyone would be in that situation. Utterly elated. I felt like I was on top of the world and I reveled in it. The villagers showered me with adulation. Adol they revered me, the daughter of God. Anyone, didn't, anyone who didn't was punished. On top of that, my blood, my blood would ca could cause miracles. Tell me, do you look down at me for feeling the way I did? No, again, this is like every other time, honestly, in those stories with them, uh, what was it, the white hair girl, honestly. Which, literally, uh, I, just, I keep forgetting that I'm, uh, technically, her name as well was also Michelle. Which I'm, uh, yeah, that's kind of funny, honestly, and all in all. Just I'm, uh, <laughs> even I'm, uh, what was it? Just make even just sell even more and more sad because of the coincidence, honestly, or the purposeful action of um, uh, such a, a woman with that name, honestly, coming to greet her, honestly, in the mansion. <laughs> but like, yeah, no, it's understandable, understandable. Look, if like if you're in a position, and like um, uh, if you're in that same position, and it's not causing harm to anyone else, or there's someone causing you harm, manipulate to get your way out of it, honestly. Doing anything else would just be fall, you're just calling for your own death. The actual child of God would never let herself be consumed by such base emotions, would she? But if you give me a chance, I'd like to explain myself. Uh, again, I'm not really, uh. I feel like they're trying to go more into thematics of, like, I'm, uh, whether, like, I'm a uh, human beast, and I guess now they're going into the third one of I'm, uh, I'm uh, a, a god or just, like, a divine being, honestly. I'd like to explain myself. I was but a young girl at the time. No, really. And a child, her mother is the world. Anything she says is the absolute truth. So my mother's claims would happen to coincide with a lucky miracle, my young mind was set in stone. I mean, yeah. I was a saint. My blood could heal the sick. And nothing would convince me otherwise. The draw was but a girl six years old. Six years old? Oh my god, that's a lot to put on a kid. Jesus, I thought I'd be like when you're older or something like that, but okay. Well, I mean, it's like the mom was already like spreading that word around for so long. It makes sense why there was just a guy who's like, no, shut sh up, you. It makes sense. <laughs> it's not my place to decide whether my blood truly had miraculous powers or not. If you think it did, then it did. If you think it was all happenstance, then so it was. Miracles are brought about by faith. The elderly woman who was healed was done so with the power of her own belief. The placebo effect, you say? <laughs> Baseless hope and desire can at times make the otherwise impossible reality. You understand just how major a role religion played in our time, don't you, Michelle? Especially as someone whose life was taken from him in the name of God. And you understand how powerful word of mouth can be as well, don't you? Uh, yes, I'm a her mentality, uh, the, the peer pressure and all that. <laughs> Scapegoating, we, we, uh... It didn't take long for word of the miracle performing child of God to spread. Travelers from faraway lands came to our village, all in search of aid. Driven by a mixture of elation and duty, I gave my blessings unto every pilgrim who sought them. I gave them my blood, yes. 
My own hands are perpetually covered in wounds. Oh, you kept using your hands. Oh, yay. Running out of the skin of my fingers, I cut the back of my hands, my palms, and my wrists. Before long, they turned into swollen, carved up black and red horrors. And so I kept them wrapped in cloth at all times, and slowly turned into a mummy? The only time I uncovered them was to give blood to those who sought it. My molasserated hands were, in no uncertain terms, gruesome and unsightly. But the believers who came to see me all wept in my selfless sacrifice. And so I came to cherish those wounds. There were some for whom no miracle took place. But whenever that would happen, the villagers would come out and say, The daughter of God is to blame, because we lack sufficient faith. Thus, such incidents had no negative effect on my reputation as a saint. For three years, I continued doling out blessings, and only when you were nine years old, oh boy. I, I, I swear, is this turning to an actual paranormal situation, honestly, in a sense? Well, technically it's reversed, but you still don't need... That movie's good. That movie's good. <laughs> One day, while I was offering a prayer, my mother let slip her discontent. Why must you hand out miracles for nothing? You gotta... We gotta get money from it. Pay it. Like normal church. Okay, well, the music went a bit weird, but okay. Why must you give strangers grace? We should be getting compensated. We deserve rem remuneration. remuneration. <laughs> if we charge it a little bit for each blessing, we could be living so much more comfortably. I was dunfounded. How can the mother of a saint say such things? Some people is my divine calling, and she expected payment? I only wept, my mother preoccupied with such worldly desires. I explained to her how important this work was. I taught her that we were not to covet material wealth, that we were to dedicate our lives to service to the fellow man. You're right, my dear saint, she said, understanding. And I believed her. I fell asleep the night convinced she truly understood and that there would be no more problems. The next day, I was sold off. Men I'd never seen before carried me by my arms and tossed me to a carriage. Confused and panicked, I stuck my head out, searching for my mother. Off in the shadow of the house, I saw her with a strange man. Extending a bag of coins. Yeah. The carriage rocked back and forth, back and forth as it rolled along a dirt road. Shaking and bouncing within it, I struggled with overwhelming grief and despair. It was perhaps the first in my life I'd felt such a powerful emotion. I didn't know what I felt so much despair over, though. Obviously, it was my present predicament, but I wasn't sure what about it hurt the most. Was it that I was pawned off like a slave? Was it my mother? The mother of a saint had been blinded by money? Was it the villagers had been watching silence as a disciple of the Lord was thrown into a carriage? Or was it that I, daughter of God, lamented my misfortune like a mortal? I decided it was a trial. My father, the Lord God, was testing my worthiness of being his daughter. So I choked back my urge to cry and sat there in silent contemplation. For almost three weeks I was I rocked around the carriage. The coachman treated me well enough. I'm certain it was only because he didn't want his precious cargo dying before he could deliver it. Hmm. Yeah, like, this seems to be reminded of, like, a story I read, like, uh, in one of the courses I took, where I'm, uh, like, there was a the topic of my faith, honestly, in old, um, uh, literature, honestly. There was this one story about, um, uh, a, about a woman, like, being kidnapped by a Native American back in the, when they were born together, honestly, and they, she took it as a sign of, um, uh, a trial, honestly, to take, honestly. That uh, no matter what she like went through, nor what ordeals or I guess torture, or, like a uh, misfortune befell her after that, like it was all just a test of faith and resolve. So, hmm. He did not by any means think of me the child of God. The third week, the carriage arrived at the city. It was much larger than the village I'd grown up in, with many, many more people crowding the streets. The thing about them felt different too. They all spoke in a tongue foreign to me. Which is when I realized I was far, far away from home. I was delivered to the lavishly decorated mansion of the region's lord. Brightly colored flowers bloomed wildly in the garden as guests laughed and ate extravagant meals. In addition to them, there were probably four times as many slaves moving about the grounds. Getting a range of looks from everyone we passed. 
from smartly dressed men to scrawny, emaciated servants. I was led to the Lord's chambers. The Lord was surrounded by beautiful women. Perhaps they were slaves, or perhaps they were prostitutes, I couldn't tell. Among them were some girls hardly older than me. They all wore thin swaths of cloth, barely covering themselves at all. The Lord looked me up and down. With a laugh, he said, Welcome, daughter of God. You're performing miracles for me now. Miracles are not something to be performed for one single person's benefit. Oh, I replied, shocked and furious he just said something so utterly blasphemous. In response, he said, I bought you. You're my property. You have no right to an opinion. Dang, I didn't realize you can buy a, buy a child of God then if, I, if you believe everything then. But I would not have any of it. I entreated him to give up his indulgent lifestyle and devote himself to the service of the Lord. The more I pleaded, the, more, the deeper the creases in his face grew. Thinking back in it now, it was hardly surprising. Well, yeah, and it, it makes sense why you would say that. Like, you totally believed in it. And when you're you're just nine years old, so yeah. A nine-year-old girl was still in the most powerful man in the region. And I believed it was my duty, and I was only doing what I was right. But he surely saw it as incredible arrogance. So the Lord forced his will upon me. He bowed my hands and feet and caught me without my permission, then gobbled my blood and passing around to his guests. A saint's blood and good fortune to all. That's when I realized the Lord was only interested in the approval of others. He reveled in their envy as he pranced about, showing off his curious new toy. Me. He didn't need any miracles. Neither he nor any of his guests were afflicted with disease or misfortune here. They were all richly blessed. Every time he threw a banquet, he drained me my blood. It became nearly impossible to find a spot in either my arms that wasn't a swollen, reddish black gash. And soon, because my arms weren't providing enough blood for him, the cutting spread, spread to my legs. I lived in a haze of half consciousness. Yeah, losing that much blood up. Uh that much? Oh my god, I'm more surprised that you haven't died from blood loss. Honestly, didn't amaze it didn't kill me, <laughs> though perhaps the Lord was simply taking care not to take more than my body could spare. I'm watching the wealthy partygoers laugh and sip my blood through bleary eyes. Another wave of despair came over me. Wow, this blood is like, uh, uh delicious wine. I can smell like the oaky nuttiness of the, the grapes inside of it. Sip, slurp, wow. My miracles, my blood, were not meant to be an appetizer to feast. They were meant to be, be for the sick and the poor. As my wishes, the Lord persisted to squeeze me dry day in and day out for his own enjoyment. It makes sense for the time, honestly. If it's, uh, I guess, the, like, taking advantage of people like the other several stories were. Well, kind of, anyway. For a while, I was convinced it was all God's test. That was all part of his plan for me, his daughter. If I could make it through this trial, I would be allowed to go back to helping people. That man would celebrate my success, envy me, worship me. The sinners would face punishment. The divine retribution would be delivered unto all who had wronged me, a saint. With each passing day, my spirit grew more twisted. Would anyone have believed that scarred and bloody girl tied up on the floor in the banquet at all was a saint? Unlikely. This is no charitable gathering, but an unholy sabbat. Perhaps it's caused my own corrupted spirit. Perhaps it was my own heart's way of crying for help. Perhaps it was the devil giving me my witch's mark. No matter what the cause, during one of the bloody banquets, I underwent a transformation. I was half conscious as usual, when one of the guests pointed at me and shouted something. His face went pale, as if he were afraid, which I found quite curious. The Lord then approached me, grabbing by my hair and lifting my head. He yelled something, but I was far too gone to be able to make out what he was saying. Suddenly I found myself released from my bonds, but my body had grown so weak from being tied up for so long, I didn't have the strength to hold myself up, and so I collapsed to the floor. I was trying to figure out what happened was happening when the Lord drew a sword, raising it high above his head. His words in that moment reached me with perfect clarity. You're a damned witch wearing a saint's skin! A witch? D d okay, wow then. Well, d okay then, well then your fault that you fucking drank from a, a witch then. <laughs> uh, losers. 
Why was he calling me a witch? I was the holy daughter of God. I certainly never made a pact with a devil. What could have given him the idea? It's in store for me now. Had God performed some kind of miracle for him? Doesn't the thoughts and questions flow through my mind as death hung over me? I couldn't comprehend anything, and so I didn't feel any fear or anger at my impending death. I was simply curious. What had happened to me? Before I had a chance to find that answer, they swung down their blade. We. That warning. Without any time to repair, the darkness drains away. What, are you saying like those, like, what, those three people that you were like, uh, I don't know, like, were just, you're tormenting, were just reincarnated versions of people that were in part of that feast? That, that, okay then, why choose only those three people and not everyone who did it then? Was the, um, was one of the three people, one of the three men there, like, the Lord, honestly? If not, then, what the fuck are you even doing? <laughs> This is the worst revenge plan I've ever seen in my goddamn life, then. A second later, I cracked into stairs. Hard. D uh, uh, uh. Right in my ear, I can hear the hiss of the river of blood. It just, okay, just spreads right over it. The world fades in and out of view, giving way to very real images of a past I never lived. I can practically feel the fire in, my, in the eyes of that mad blood bank with guests. My vision distorts. I can't regain my focus. Whose blood is this streaming down the stairs? Is it hers? Yeah, it'd be symbolic and thematic, yes. Is it mine? Who am I? Who am I? A saint? A witch? Is what I'm seeing through a lens of clarity or madness? Wait, no. No. I am not her. I am Michelle. No one else. It hurts, doesn't it? It's hard to breathe. Your chest is on fire. Your vision is blurry. It's dark. It's lonely. It's scary. It's kind of bad that I'm, uh, there's also the known fact that I'm, uh, you probably still alive when you, you get beheaded, too. At least for a few more seconds, honestly. You still have the opportunity to um, uh, stare around and comprehend what's going on for a bit before your functions cease. <laughs> Yay, fun facts with myths. Yay. It's frustrating, it's disheartening, it's exasperating, isn't it? What you're feeling is exactly the pain I felt. <laughs> Back to darkness we go. I reached my hand out in a plea for help, which when I see something I can hardly believe. Another ghost! Oh, the cuts, oh yeah. Yeah, you're now feeling, seeing um, uh, everything that happened with you now. Both of my arms are covered in gashes, blood flowing from them without end. I would assume there'd be like more uh, black and blue um, uh, like scabs and all that, like from everywhere on your hands. But I'm, uh, I guess if they don't want to show off that disgusting side. I'm, uh, I guess just blood. Honestly, is the next best thing. Honestly, honestly, they want to go fully into it. Then yes, do that. The raw flesh beneath my skin has been exposed to the open air. Uh, uh, all I can bring myself to do is scream. That pain, her horrible past, doing everything in its power to break me. That nine-year-old girl's sickening experiences are twisting and constricting and crushing me. Why is this happening to you? Are you really that slow, my dear? I mean, yeah, she did say um, uh, it was going to happen to you. Although I did think it was going to happen in the middle of the story. And, um, uh, you'd like uh, be a sort of back and forth thing of like, um, uh, when something happens, like um, uh, then um, uh, Michelle then had to feel it as well. Like literally he had to... He was hit a wince and like him a hold himself together, honestly. But having it all take place all at once, right after the story happens, hmm. Again, it's one of those things I can't tell if it's better or worse. It's happening all at once, like a lifetime of the injuries she sustained and the torture she went through. All that is happening to him all at once, or he slowly and slowly gets those injuries as the course of the story goes on. The dread and then the pain it's piling on and on and on for each other, hmm. You're emphasize, emphasizing with my pain. You're an empath now. You're just that kind-hearted, Michelle. Aw, oh, how sweet. <laughs> you said you wouldn't give up, didn't you? That you would make your way to me. Climb up the stairs in this um, uh, scabbed and cut state. I'm sure this, wouldn't be, this won't be enough to do you in. Of course it won't. Oh, oh. Mustering up every last bit of strength I can. 
and began crawling up the stairs. The red river beats against my open wounds, stinging painfully. The simple act of lifting an arm or a leg is almost unbearably agonizing. The blood dripping from my lacerated arms mixes with the blood already soaking the tower. So this is the pain Morgana suffered? D do you despise everyone, Morgana? Do you resent your mother's betrayal? The people who came seeking your blood? The lord who took your life? Turned to hatred for all mankind? Eh, your perception of me is still incorrect, Michelle. My grudge is only against a select few. Think about it, my dear. With the thousands, millions, and billions of people living on this planet, my world is comprised of but a minuscule fraction of that. Hatred for all mankind? No, what I feel is not nearly so nebulous. Although, if I had died still believing it was a saint, maybe I wouldn't have had such a well-defined mission. Are you saying the Lord didn't kill you? Oh my, did you think that was the end of my tale? We're just taking a pause and a breather so you can feel my pain. Yeah, my first thought was honestly just like I'm uh, someone blocked the sword attack or whatever, but like I'm just more wondering like if uh, if no one did block that, like just am I exactly uh, how? How the story would continue on from there if no one blocked the sword? Or uh, I, I don't know. Like someone decided to shut the Lord dead or whatever? I don't know. This is this is the same exact thing of what Giselle was doing. Like, can we like okay, that's the end of the story. Can we please not do this anymore? Please, Michelle, please. No, we gotta continue on, Michelle. We we gotta please gotta continue on Giselle, sorry. My god. <laughs> is it on purpose they chose Michelle and Giselle's names to be so similar? Was it on purpose? I swear. Like it just gives me like spark a reminded of like those parents who decide to name their twins honestly, like something similar, like Timmy or Tommy, and like, why? Why do parents do that? Why? Why would you do that to your child? Why would you do that to your children? Why? That's why you're big talk, you're afraid of having to suffer through any more of that, aren't you? But you're the one who said you wouldn't give in. So go on. Know my pain. Without losing your mind. Darkness again. Darkness bubbles around you. Engulfing your senses. Engulfing your mind. Engulfing your wounds. Engulfing your injuries. Engulfing your spirit. Ugh. Once again, my surroundings crumble. I have no say. I have no chance to object before I'm dragged back to that repulsive banquet. I reach out, stretching my hand as far as it will reach, but all I can grab is darkness, slipping through your bloody fingers and the wounds. My bloody body sinks back into the abyss. The pain just becomes more than just a memory, eroding away my consciousness. And now you're half conscious of watching all this somehow uh, happen. More blood. You're a damned witch wearing a saint's skin! Maybe if I had died then, I wouldn't have become the witch you know now. But that's all conjecture, anyway. Theorizing about what could have happened is an exercise in futility, but it's a fun what if. Hmm. But no, I did not die that day. Brought together by constant mistreatment, the Lord Slaves chose that moment to start their revolt. When he swung down his blade, someone bumped into him and was knocked off his course. I didn't have the strength to get to my feet, so I simply watched the, ch the chaos unfold before my hazy eyes. It never once occurred to me that I should try to escape. Just watch the terror, the agony, and the chaos unfold before you firsthand. At some point in the riot, a young man, one of the slaves, grabbed me my bloody, ripped limp arm and led me out of the Lord's Manor. The young man brought me to a slum, a place where the people bend together in their hardship, afraid of scraping together and not to eat every day, let alone pay the taxes demanded of them. By the time we arrived at a small brothel, located a ways into the slum, the fog was starting to clear from my mind. I knew where we were, and feeling the gaze of those scantily clothed women, I trembled. In a sense, I was possibly the most frightened I'd ever been in my life, despite everything else I had been through. The idea that I had fallen so far I would have had to become a prostitute scared me to death. As a... Oh god, yeah. Oh god. After all, I was a saint, and saints were supposed to re retain their purity. Spreading my legs or any man who gave me enough coins would sl shatter my very identity. As all that was going through my mind, I probably shouted, NO, in protest. Because a slave gave me an exasperated look, 
told me he hadn't brought me here to become a prostitute. He said he knew someone here, someone I could trust, and that she would give me a room. I had trouble believing him, though. I couldn't trust the word of a prostitute. Why? Why not? Someone who valued money more than her own body. Oh. Okay, so you were raised like that. Okay, then. Okay, then. Alright. It was all a trap, I'm sure. One day they would tell me I had to work. Nothing he said would convince me otherwise. Apparently, since he might mistrust, the slave gave me an apologetic frown and handed me a mirror, saying, Even if you d if you did, you couldn't get any work looking like that. I cannot believe what I saw. Uh, did they, they even go for, like, her face as well? Like, oh, jeez. That could be my face. Yeah. It had to be an illusion. There was no way. That was not the face of a saint. Couldn't be. It wasn't real. It wasn't possible. Patches of skin had fallen off my face, exposing the raw, red flesh beneath. It looked quite similar to what had been done to my arms and legs. Except my face had never been cut before. Looking myself in the mirror, even I doubted my own sainthood. The thing in my reflection was a hellish abomination. It wasn't the twisted face of a, it was a twisted face of a witch. And although I was shocked by what I saw, at the same time, it answered several ling lingering questions. It explained why the Lord and his pa guests had panicked the sight of me. What, they brought- they, wait, so they literally just brought you to the banquet hall, got your blood from them, got got, got your blood from from you, and literally drank, and all of a sudden, like, I'm a- then he noticed what they'd done to you, and it's like, oh, now you look disgusting. We can't drink blood from you anymore. Like, what the fuck were they expecting to happen? Like, oh, uh, okay, that just- uh, okay? Okay? All right? Unless you're saying that, like, because of everything that happened from, like, they done to her cuts, like, from, uh, the neck down, I guess, it just spread to- her face, but it says, like, the same that's been done to her arms and legs. Okay, then those people are fucking idiots. Wow. It also explained why he had said I was a witch wearing a saint's skin. You guys are a bunch of idiotic, like, bastards, honestly. Jesus fucking Christ. I don't know, I don't even know what's a bigger word to say than I'm, uh, like, they're all just fucking idiots. I don't even know what's a bigger word than that. Over the course of the dozens of banquets I participated in, my face must have mutated. Twisted into this ugly, sickening, monstrous thing. The sight of what I had become sapped the last bit of willpower from me. Not because I was particularly fond of my face or thought myself especially beautiful. Because it crushed me to see everything saintly about me crumble away. Test from God for otherwise, I didn't have the strength left to attempt to overcome it. Deciding I would rather be dead than struggle any longer. I begged the slave to kill me. Taking one's own life was a sin. If I did that, I would not be able to turn to my father's side. And I went to ask him why I had been put through such tribulation. The young man refused. He said, completely missing my attention. I persevered. Good fortune would eventually find me. He said if I lived on, I'd eventually have a chance to get my pay payback. I had no such worldly concerns, though. If no one would take my life, I had no choice but to live. They despised life at the brothel. Men who came to buy the services were disgusting buffoons. The kind of people who would think they could deceive God. The men fawning over them were just as repulsive. That said, I had nowhere else to go. Which meant I was forced to suffer that sickening place. Okay. By the time a year or so had passed, my feelings about it had changed. Okay, good. The moment the brothel took care of me, treated me like a sister. At first, it was just irritating. I was a saint. How could a saint have prostitutes for sisters? Wow, you, uh, had a lot of, um, uh, prejudice then. Jesus fucking Christ. But over time, I got to know them better. Grew to accept to appreciate their circumstances and hardships. Despite barely having enough money to keep food on the table, whenever they had a little to spare, they would use it to purchase medicine. Ointments to apply to my arms, legs, and face. And the result of their generosity, my arms and legs started to look almost human, but nothing had any effect on my face. Occasionally, the slave would drop in to check on me. The other men thought me ghastly and wouldn't get anywhere near me, but he was different. And every time he visited, he would say, 
One day, I'll show you the world. Okay. I was wondering if he was going to be a throwaway character, but I was thinking whether or not he was one of the three people. My first thought, honestly, is I'm, uh, if there was anyone for, what was it, for uh, Morgana to, like, felt betrayed by someone, it'd be, probably be this guy. My first thought was, be like, maybe Mel? But, like, I'm trying, I'm mostly just going along with, like, I guess their personalities, like, in, if, they, if the stupid reincarnation even matters, honestly, their personality, like, carries over from one life to another, honestly. And to tell you the truth, I was beginning to grow attached to it all. My time at the brothel was probably, all things considered, one of the brighter chapters of my life. There, I was neither a saint nor a witch, but an ordinary human girl. For the first time, I felt like my life had meaning beyond my assumed divine purpose. I was even beginning to feel kind of happy. With each passing day, my intractable worldview was gaining a little flexibility. Perhaps I could perform miracles. With these hands, I hold the fate of millions within them. <laughs> that didn't necessarily mean I had to be the daughter of a god or a saint. Maybe just a regular person, having possessed some unusual abilities. <laughs> Ridiculous, is it? Despite coming to accept my humanity, I refuse to let go of my miraculous powers. I mean, if it happened continuously over and over, and you were just told as a kid like that, then yeah, I guess. It doesn't, it's, it's fine. They were the last thing protecting what I thought of as myself. But to me at the time, it felt like a very dramatic chain of heart. Three years after the revolt of the Lord's Manor, I had my 12th birthday, for which they threw me a little dinner party. No. The women all pitched in and baked me treats, and the young slave man was there too. I was happy. I thought if life could continue on like with this, like continue on like this, I was fine with not going back to being a saint. But for some reason, for some reason, happiness always seems to slip away as soon as you got your hands around it. Oh, that sounds familiar. No one sincerely wants to lose it, so why must they? I certainly didn't mind not being miserable. The, 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 yeah, I, the, wow, there's people over there who like enjoy being miserable. Oh, the weirdos. Eh, or they're just used to it. Let me tell you what happened that night. The night of my birthday celebration, bandits attacked the brothel. We... Now, bandits were hardly a rarity that time, so everyone was on the, always on the lookout, and we never went out at night. They wouldn't stop robbing you either. They are armed with blades and would frequently kill the targets as necessary. But cautiously as we were, we were helpless against a direct raid. Hmm. The brothel fell into a panic, screams echoing the night. The customers were carved up and left for dead. The women were bound and stowed away to be sold. My peace of world shattered an instant. Hmm. Next thing I knew, I was some slave trader's merchandise. I don't know what became the prostitutes who cared for me or the slave who brought me to them. I assume the women who were sold and the young man slaughtered. Oh. Regardless, I found myself being rocked around the back of the carriage once more. Hmm. Well, like... You know the circumstances are definitely different. There's like some similarities that Morgana's story has with Giselle in a sense. Mostly just in the whole thing of like being forced to one place to another, honestly. And the misfortune following, honestly, no matter what. Hmm. I wonder if like the, that means Morgana felt some kind of maybe kinship then? A tiny bit? And like it was like that's why she took her on, even if Lily just also just like, you know, torment her, I guess, in a weird sense. I don't know. The carriage was packed so tight you could barely see the floor. It smelled like death. Sweat, urine, feces, every foul odor imaginable compressed into a tiny space. There were both men and women there, nearly all of them muttering or groaning or weeping. Everyone was young, ripe to be put to work. It didn't take me long to realize what fate awaited these people, and me, and when I did, I just sat there in silence, and for the first time, I cried. I was experiencing, I believe, a very human emotion. I was sad, hurt that I had been taken away from a place where I was happy. From the woman of the brothel and that young man, it crushed me, and no longer did I wonder why such a thing was happening to the Holy Daughter of God. The thing about my tears must have seemed strange to him. Because one man saw me and said, Why are you crying? He was a curious man. 
Star, he looked very different from anyone else. The color of his skin, the length of his nose, the shape of his eyes. The shape of his eyes? What? Oh. Oh, are, oh my, it's okay. Hesitantly, I replied. I'm sad because I didn't get the chance to show my gratitude to people who were very dear to me. The man fell, fell silent, looking as though he was deep in thought. I had no idea why he'd asked me that. Something about him made me uncomfortable, so I couldn't bring myself to ask. Several hours later, the man suddenly stood up. The, gu the guards had no patience for anyone stepping out of line, and they didn't look like they would hesitate to kill us either. So, unsurprisingly, one in the back of the carriage drew his sword and pointed to the man. What was surprising, though, was what happened next. The man, his hand shackled like the rest of us, left for the guard, slamming his fist to his face and stealing his sword. The entire carriage was in shock. The guards were too stunned to effectively react, so they were quick, quickly cut down. And because the one man up uprising had taken place between cities, there was no one the slave traders could ask for help before they were slaughtered. Okay, well, nice. <laughs> In the blink of an eye, it was all over. And there's nothing human about what I witnessed. Does it matter if it was human or barbaric or not? If I describe it, I would say it was the wild beast had attacked. Okay, that's meant to be a... Uh, Meant to be Yuki Maza? Wait, I, wait, I swear to god, if that slave man that was from before was meant to be Mel, like, if it's meant to be Mel, and this is meant to be Yuki Maza, what the f- like, unless something changes with this guy, like, and the slave man comes back, then what the f- why the fuck did you center on- center on those three? Why? The man ruffled through the slave trader's clothes until he found the keys, which he brought to me, ordering and shackle him. And so I did as he commanded. Once they had enough time to process what happened, the would-be slaves applauded, and everyone clapped. The wretched souls have been saved, and for a moment, I believe so too. The man seemed free. He rolled his shoulders a couple times, made sure everything was in place. Oh, and then uh, they, he decided to go in the offensive too. And then, he began his massacre. We. Oui. Screams of agony filled the carrot as he ran his sword through the helpless men and women packed inside it. Blood and guts were splattered against every surface. And those who tried to escape did not get far before being mercilessly skewered. It was like a scene out of a nightmare. I was frozen in place. Not out of fear, but because my mind shut down. Yay, misfortune, 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 after another, after another, after another, after another, going round and around and around and around and around and around and again. I couldn't make sense of what was happening, so my mind rejected it. With my brain having given up, my body was no more than a lifeless puppet. In short order, all the slaves were dead, and I was sitting in a pool of blood staring at the man. He pointed his blade at me, and with a little smirk said, Why don't you run? In turn, I asked him, Why'd you kill them? The smile vanished from his face, and after a few quiet moments of pondering, he replied, Because I felt like it. And why haven't you killed me yet? I asked. To which he gave a curt, I don't know. Then withdrew his braid and blade and wandered off into the distance. And then I was all alone, surrounded by corpses. I glanced down, and half of someone's face looking up at me. We. Were you still chained up and had to drag yourself to civilization to leave the keys behind? Wrapped in absolute darkness. I'm trying to imagine, actually, Emma. Like, she didn't even, even get any injuries here in this section of the story, did she? So it's mostly just I guess the only thing that would be here would just be psychological, mental torment then. Wrapped in absolute darkness, warm blood spills into my cheeks, my hair, and my skin. What? The, oh, from the. Uh, okay. Chunks of human flesh rain down on me. Oh, it's raining blood and flesh and gore. We. Oh, make it stop! Pitter patter, pitter patter. There's no end to the deluge. The smell of death hangs in the air. I'm struck with a wave of nausea so strong I can't hold back the content of my stomach. Yeah. But when my mouth opens to vomit, blood pours into it. Oh, I thought I, I thought blood was pouring out of there for a second. I was like, okay then. Oh boy. Uh, uh, let go of me. Dead bodies grab my ankles, dragging me down. 
to where? Hell? Or to the mountain of corpses? Now, do you understand that there was a time, if but briefly, when I was happy, and I felt human emotions? But I wish I never had. If I remained confined in my Daughter of God shell, I doubt I would have felt so much terror at the sight of death. <laughs> so this is really just only just like, a, I guess, a feeling of that same, I guess, uh, feeling of death and despair again. I can't say anything in response. It just nailed straight into your brain, hammering into your your head over and over and over again. I can't form words. I feel what she experienced, the massacre she witnessed, the limp flesh piling up around her. But even more than twice her age, it's enough to drive me mad. The fact that, the fact that a twelve-year-old girl would experience something so unspeakable devastates me. Tell me, my dear, do you pity me? Do you sympathize with me? Do you emphasize? Do you, if you feel bad for me, then you'll remain with me. You'll feel my pain and my despair with me, won't you? <laughs> Which is cackle echoes through the pile of bodies. There's not a speck of light, and hideous death lingers everywhere. Help us resist. I'm dragged down into a deep, dark ocean. An ocean of blood. Iron lung? <laughs> God. Now, on with the story. <laughs> okay. I was complete lost for some time after that. I didn't want to return to the city, because I knew there was no one left who would take me in. It was only the Lord who had bound me and drained me my blood. So, I wandered the roads. No destination of mine and nothing to defend myself but the clothes on my back. Frankly, I'm rather surprised I wasn't attacked by bandits. After walking for days without food or water, my mind was hazy and in exhaustion at a peak. In the distance, I saw a lake. Hmm. If, like, what was it? Like, uh... If only the slave man was meant to be like, a, a version of Mel, and of course that man who literally just uh, slaughtered everyone except for her was only meant to be like Yuki Ma's in a sense. Um, so like she's gonna meet someone who like was in the fucking mafia part of the bandits, then I guess. Okay. In the distance, I saw a lake. So driven by my thirst, I turned my unsteady feet toward the water, not caring that it took me off the main road. And it turned out that was a correct choice because there was a small cottage beside the lake. Smoke rising from the chimney, telling me it wasn't abandoned. Out of sheer desperation, I knocked on the door. No one answered. The door wasn't locked, so I slowly, hesitantly pushed it open. And beyond it, I found an old woman, sitting dead in a chair. Wow. The woman was a witch. Okay, how? How? By, by trade, that is. Okay. Oh, there's a, cod, a cauldron in the middle of there, boiling and tumbling, bubble and bubble and toil. It appeared that she had a deep knowledge of medicinal herbs, using them to make assortment of medicines. In her cabinets were dozens of small glass bottles containing dried, powdered leaves and crushed berries, among other things. On the fire was a cauldron, liquid bubbling inside. Oh, she died in the middle of her work. Huh. The woman looked as though she was asleep. Presumably she had passed away of old age. There was no sign of bandits had been rooting through the cottage, and she had a look of absolute sincerity and her serenity in her face. Looking over the dead woman's body, I didn't cross myself. I envied her. Dragging the woman's body by her feet, I dumped her into the lake. Do you think so makes me a bad person? Makes me unsightly? I mean, uh, no? What, 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 what is it supposed to expect that you'd make a dig a grave for her? When you were exhausted after all the time? Uh, you knew. Well, I didn't have anywhere else to go, and the owner of the cozy cottage is no longer this world. And there was no reason I couldn't fill the home in their stead was there, and become a witch herself! I deserved to have somewhere I felt comfortable, with everything I had been through, didn't I? And so I took up residence in the old witch's cottage and remained there until my 16th year, for four years, oh wow. 
By 16, a terrible cynicism had taken room in my heart. I would I would be surprised if you didn't. I would be fucking surprised if you didn't. I had no trust for people. I shut them out, building high walls around myself. After such a tumultuous, bloody childhood, it was all I could do to protect myself, keep my young spirit from cracking. Nevertheless, travelers would, on occasion, pay the old witch's cottage a visit, seeking your medicines. Whenever someone arrived, I would consciously crack the door open, telling them they could trade for whatever they wanted with food, and never showing my face. One day, a young man showed up at the cottage. My sister has fallen very ill, and she desperately needs medicine. He was very soft-spoken. Oh, that's Mel? Okay, then. There was a distinct kindness in his voice, which I thought unusual. Curious. What kind of person could he be? What did he look like? What expressions did he make as he spoke? To satisfy that curiosity, I took a peek at him through the crack in the door. Oh my god, is this gonna be a thing where, like, when someone sees her face, they all assume, like, oh my god, she really is a witch. She made herself to be younger. Oh my god. He was a young, handsome young, woman, young man with a flowing flocks and hair. That technically just means that he, like, she met the Yuki Maza first, then Mel, honestly. Literally the exact same order that I thought the stories in the time zones were actually going. The, the timeline, chronologically. Before the game apparently showed them, and no, it was Mel, then Yukimaza, yeah, then Jokapo. Eh. He was a young, handsome man with the flowing flax and hair, and upon seeing me, he didn't flinch back in disgust. He smiled. According to him, his younger sister had fallen gravely ill. And though he tried a number of remedies, she was still bedridden. I'm honestly wondering if the, I guess the, the good witch, I guess, in the, there in that college, honestly, like, had a bunch of recipes, honestly, that you can, like, mess and mingle around with, or you mostly just, because you had all the, those ingredients in your disposal, you were just left there to, um, uh, what is the word, um, uh, experiment, if you definitely went that path, honestly, or not. Yeah. Though they had a number of remedies, she was still bedridden. Medicines I gave him too had no effect, but he persisted in his quest, visiting me again and again for new combinations to try. He wanted nothing more than to relieve the, even the slightest bit of his sister's suffering, and, moved by his dedication to his family, I too wanted to do anything I could to help. The first of my years, my world encompassed more than my small cottage. When the young man came, he would ask not only for medicine, but to go on walks with me. He volunteered to spend time with me, despite my horrifying appearance. It's not healthy to stay holed up inside all the time. You have this beautiful lake right here. Why don't you say we take a little walk around the shoreline? He said the smile, taking me by the hand. We spoke as he circled the lakeside. His voice was always soft and pleasant, like a ray of light shining through a crack in the walls. When I was with him, I felt like I could be an actual person, an ordinary girl. We talked about his sister more than anything. Whenever he did, he was at his brightest, and most melancholy. The young man had been a member of a noble house, but disputes over who was the rightful heir had forced him and his sister out. Shortly after that, his sister had fallen ill and was now bedridden. I'll take anything at this point to make her better. I even may take a miracle if I can get one. That word, muttered beneath his breath, sparked my memory. I was a saint. My blood had healing properties. I had no reason to hesitate. So need my help, who deserved it more than his kind-hearted young man's sister. So I decided to tell him what I really was. My blood had miraculous powers that saved people. When I had been born, the drought plugging my village had come to an end. I had been known as a saint, the daughter of God. I told him everything. And he believed it all. He led me to his house, where a pale, sickly young girl lay in bed. She was a s sweet little girl with the same flaxen hair as her brother, who looked like she would have been quite spirited if not for ailment. It was touching to see the two siblings sitting there together, quietly holding each other. I would gladly give my blood for the two of them. Mm, it's sweet, but again, like I'm, uh... Most of the entire whole story is mostly just besides him, uh, 
small bits of like the i guess sweetness and kindness and my, my mind is mostly again like as everyone going through the story would just go just go into and just some uh just prepare themselves as a keep into the distance of him uh oh it's all gonna be bad anyway so uh eh. raise a wall make a shell and all that and so i made a new cut on my arm which had healed considerably thanks to the sound the slave and the woman the brothel and let the girl drink of my blood Neither of them had any doubts about my sainthood, because they believed a miracle occurred. A flaxen-haired girl covered enough to get out of her bed. I was extremely proud of myself. I felt like, for once, I had actually saved someone's life. The only issue was, she didn't make a complete recovery. Hmm. For a few days after drinking my blood, she was in good health, but her condition quickly regressed. I was deeply perplexed by this. A miracle had un had undoubtedly taken place, but was only temporary. Now, though, I believe I explain what happened. Okay. Her recovery was nothing more than a placebo effect caused by her faith. Yeah. That's something I couldn't have known at the time. We were all the three complex, and we were all three disheartened. Nevertheless, I was prepared to give her my blood as many times needed. Whenever condition worsened, the young man came to request more, and never once did I turn him away. On the contrary, I enthusiastically offer her my services. Yeah, based on all your, like, child and all that, it makes sense why you would do all this. Eh. Yeah. Like, you're, eh. Uh... Yeah, it all makes sense, though, still. Over time, though, the hope in his eyes began to fade. He asked me on fewer walks, and he seemed hesitant to look me in the eye. I assume it was out of discomfort, out of guilt, out of shame about asking for blood. I don't think his concerns were for me, rather himself and his sister. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, blood was considered unclean in our time. And not only was it giving mine away, I was having his sister imbibe it. Looking that way, it would hardly be a surprise for him anyone else to think that I was doing well, what I was doing depraved. As time passed, the flaxen-haired young man seemed to grow more and more disturbed by me. Well, it's kind of- you could have just uh, talked about it or just said no. But, uh, okay, then no. That was what I got for opening up. That was for what I got for letting his kind, warm light sh shine in on me. And when things went bad, he pulled away. There were times when I thought I shouldn't have done anything in the first place. But regardless, I had held fast to my original decision. I would put myself in line for them. No one else. Just them. Even if he was afraid of me or had no interest in seeing me, I continued offering her my blood. And I was firm in my resolve. One day, though, I received a new visitor. The young man was still the only one I'd show my face to, the only guest I let into, into my walls. So, as usual, I took the man's request from behind the cottage door. But I could hardly believe my ears when he began speaking. Are you the witch with the miracle blood? First, how did you know my blood had powers? Second, why had he called me a witch and not a saint? Uh, is it really that, uh... What? Is it not, does it not make sense from like where you, where the, the cottage you're uh, living in? A witch by trade and you're pretending to fill and pretending and actually going and filling that role are you really what did your cognitive dissonance really just like set in that much oh da, 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 okay third why did he sound like the man who had slaughtered the slave carriage i told the man he had to leave i would not be open the door for any reason in response he said i'm in need of your blood could we not spare a little my blood was for the sick and needy or spare a drop for a murderer like him I told the man exactly that, demanding he leave. All I could think of about was the pile of bodies, the fountain of blood. The man drenched in crimson, wearing a ghastly smirk. I trembled behind the door, fearing he may go another such rampage. But instead, he gave a simple, as you say, and went on his way. And let a deep sigh of relief, which is when I realized tears were rolling down both my cheeks. Like an ordinary girl. Three days later, the flaxen haired boy showed up at my cottage. I'm sorry for being so distant lately. I want to talk things over. 
Those two sentences were like a light shining from above. I want to talk to him too. I want to take a walk around the lake and listen to him talk about nothing. I want to experience the warmth of this world once more. And I want to tell him about the terrible man who had been here a few days earlier. How scared I'd been. I want him to tell me you'll be alright. I want to talk to you too. I said, opening the door without a second thought. The light with the sun was so bright all I could make out was a silhouette. I couldn't see the look in his face, the look in his eyes. A gentle breeze blew past, and my mind froze. How could this be happening? What did it mean? Why? How? What was that man doing? Staying behind him? Ow. Well, I'm more curious why Mel, like, this version of Mel, like, decided to talk to Yuki Maz of all people, for whatever reason, to tell him about the blood, I guess? Like, what? Okay. Why was he carrying a sword? Why was he coming into my house? And why did he swing it down, severing my arm? Mm. I was in a daze. I couldn't make sense of anything. I didn't want to. My left arm fell to the floor before I even knew what was happening. My legs gave out. The pain, searing and unbearable, came a few moments later, as I was lying in an ever-expanding pool of my own blood. I did something then that I hadn't done before, that I resisted doing no matter how much blood the Lord had stolen from me. I screamed. It was a hideous, visceral noise, a sound I never thought a saint could make. The same ear-splitting howl the slaves made as the man had butchered them. I writhed, I wailed, I wept, I crawled across the floor through my own blood. I begged and I begged and I begged for my life. The man walked over and picked up my severed arm, and then, shockingly tossed it to the kind-hearted young man, after which he said, That's your share, it should last you long enough. Share? What do you mean my share? What's he talking about? Yay, being sold once again more. So literally I'm uh, only being... What was it? Only putting, like... You're only putting, like, betrayal, like, I'm, uh, I guess your grudge against these two people after years of torment, honestly? And not everyone who's done you wrong? Or was your next plan, honestly, that after these three people, like, the reincarnations of, like, everyone else who's wronged you, would then come into play, right? Would it? Would it? Or was it only just those three? Again, again, it just feels a really weird revenge plot, honestly, in reincarnation terms, honestly. If you only go after the three newest people who caused you harm. Okay? Share? What do you mean by share? What was he talking about? Why you may why had he given him my arm? And why had he taken it? Why was he talking like they knew each other? Why? Why? I had spared blood for him when he asked, hadn't I? So why was he doing this? Was cutting my arm up and stealing it easier in his conscience than simply asking? You understand how I felt, don't you? Oh yeah, no. No, they were dicks. You can put yourself in my shoes, can't you? The young man refused to look at me in the eye. Oh, no, like right here? Like if I was the situation, I would scream at him to look at me in the eyes and just drive it more home honestly for him to have psychological torment. Anything to make them make them um, uh, get more and get more and more uncomfortable with what they're doing. Anything, honestly. Holding my bloody arm in his trembling hands, he fled from the cot as quickly as his legs would allow. The man then walked over and picked me up. I had neither strength nor willpower to resist. Holding me in his arms, he began to speak, telling me things I didn't want to know, things I didn't want to hear. He didn't care. He just started talking about all the people he's killed and all that. Uh, okay. Nothing personal. I just need your blood. What, what, for you to eat or consume or whatever, or like what, like what, someone you quote unquote care about now needs the, needs the blood on us to heal? Okay. Without it, she'll lose her church. Don't take it personally. Tell me, is there anyone in this world who wouldn't feel a bit of spite at being put through such torture? Why do you say a bit? Why are you only specifying a bit? How's supposed to let that slide? No one's that much of a saint. My trust had been betrayed, and I was supposed to turn the other cheek? A man barged into my home, uninvited, and cut off my arm, and I was supposed to smile and take it? Is there anyone, anywhere, who hasn't felt even the slightest bit of hatred ever? No, like, what was it? 
like what was it it's one of those things again that i'm uh if there's someone who's like positively a saint you can all of this like the point is letting things happen like this i would just call them not like i probably even call them an ab abomination honestly in itself not even like a divine holy figure because why why ever do that literally is there anyone that's world who would just who could just laugh and brush off this level of abuse? Oh, oh, what a night, what a lovely evening it is. Oh, I lost my arm. Here's the blood for your next tea party. Oh, let me know how it goes. We can spread over the gossip and like frog in the leaves of, of and the flowers of friendship and and, and camaraderie. <laughs> no. Tell me, is there? How can I not hold a grudge? How can I not despise them? How can I possibly forgive them? Tell me, please. I don't know, I, I, you don't need to. Tell me, how could I? She needs the money. I need some way of getting enough money to keep her church running. So you need blood, which literally, what? Did the word only, wait, did only the word of, of like Mel in a sense, like literally just give so many people enough to like just say I'm a, uh, Oh, this is miracle blood, obviously. So uh, this give them, this give people who come by and drink the blood and like pay for the money off enough like, for the church to still keep going. Uh, even though no one has really heard about the, the tale except for Mel and from him spreading it, even though everyone knows at this point that his sister is legitimately still sick and ill. What the fuck are you people on about? <laughs> So the Lord made me an offer. If I brought in the witch with the miracle blood, he'd finance a whole new church for her. Oh. The Lord? Why him again? Why couldn't he leave me alone? He's trying to kill me during one of his blood sabots. Why was he after my blood once more? Had he learned it really did have the miraculous powers and decided that he wanted me back? You need to be the sacrifice. To keep her church from collapsing. To keep her world from collapsing. Sacrifice? Uh, no, in this instance, I'm, uh, grab whatever is in the room, uh, slash them, everything at, at possible. So, yeah. Cause as much pain as possible, honestly, after everything's happened. Yeah. Anyone who says otherwise, honestly, uh, I don't trust you anymore. Honestly, don't. If there's, any, if there's anyone out there who says, like, nah, just, let, just roll over and die, or, like, just let it happen to you, I don't trust you anymore. <laughs> I don't trust you immediately. <laughs> Excuse me, what? And what's all this about keeping her church from collapsing? You murdered a carriage full of innocent people. And you're trying to protect a church? You? Are you out of your goddamn mind? Churches are where people go to commune with God. To speak with my father. How dare you soil those sanctified grounds with your filthy hands, you beast? It's insulting. It's like religious. Repulsive. Just what do you think we are? So don't take it personally, witch. I... I... I'm... I'm not a witch. I'm a saint. I was a saint. My blood exists to do the world, Lord's work. Not to satisfy the avarance of man. Why is this happening to me? The man brought me back to the city. Instead of taking me to the Lord's manor, he brought me to a church in the city's outskirts. Now, to be honest, it looked more like an estate than a church. The church also served as a hospital, offering free care to less fortunate children, the poor, and the infirm. That was why I learned. That's why I learned he, why he had said he, they need money. The owner offered unconditional assistance to anyone who came. Even when food and supplies ran low, they'd ration their own in order to keep helping others. As a result, the church was perpetually on the verge of collapse. The church was run by a woman, something exceedingly rare for the time. There were no priests. All management was handled by a single nun, who I'm referred to. Oh, that nun that's in the background, holding that sword. Oh, yay, uh, this, this, the imagery and symbolism are all coming full circle now. As the saintess. Okay, that's the first time I've ever heard that word before, but okay. I was a saint, though. Well, shouldn't that mean you should be referring to yourself now as the saintess now, actually? Why was this woman, who didn't have the ability to perform miracles, being worshipped like she did? Why did the people of the city idolize her? Why were their smiles all directed at her? Why 
Why was I not in her place? The men carried me to the top of the observation tower. It was there that I had a reunion with the Lord. Oh, is that Lord meant to be Jacopo in a sense, I guess? I guess? Hmm. I was to spill my blood for the people of the city, but also for the Lord's prophet. He was not offering free aid, but selling his medicine. He claimed that it was a miracle elixir, to know that it was actually my blood. How would people not look at it, the red liquid, honestly, and not assume it's blood? Well, I guess if other medicine, honestly, is like that thick and like that thick, honestly, it could be that red, then I guess so, but still. It was mixed with beautiful red wine. Drinking, drinking it would cure you of any ailment. It's the Jesus medicine. It's the Jesus cure. <laughs> okay. The new was actually the blood of a witch. They would think it unclean. They would fear it. <laughs> <laughs> I remained in prison for a long, long time. In the beginning, the swordsmen guarded me. Though before long, a flaxen-haired young man showed up as well. Oh, hi. Presumably one severed arm was enough to keep his sister healthy for long. In listening to their conversations, I learned that to ensure no one else could get in, the observation tower was sealed with three locks. Oh, yay, the symbolism, uh, uh, so it's, uh, well, it makes sense why those three, honestly, are stuck down there for all eternity, in a sense. It makes sense. Like, I'm, uh, like, oh, uh, like, yeah, it's probably better than, I'm, uh, you didn't give him any sort of promises, honestly. And, I'm, uh, what was it, Jacopo was like, just forced away, honestly, so it makes sense. Let's, uh, I'm not gonna hold my breath about them at any point, at any point, no. You can make a case, honestly, that I'm out there reincarnated cells shouldn't it, like get that sort of revenge, but honestly, I'm uh, I just don't, I don't even care anymore. <laughs> the Lord, the Swordsman, and the young man each had held one of the keys. Ours are secret, locked away in the tower from the drain of blood away from wandering eyes. Time went on, and I grew progressively weaker. I lost the will to eat and the will to live. So I'm wondering if the whole thing about them not, like, giving up the keys, like, Mel said, like, he was not to give the key up for any circumstances, was because, like, well, the witch said that, but, like, I wonder if it's also part and, part and parcel with the, what happened in the past here. And if they don't even remember it at all, or making it worse, actually, they, um, uh, they're told exactly what they've done, and, like, this is their, um, uh, infinite, um, uh, infinite, never-ending, um, uh, repentance, honestly, but... First off, actually, first off at all, what the fuck is the witch doing for all three of them when they're stuck in their, like, the den, the wine cellar, or, um, uh, the den? What, they're just standing around there, just waiting around there for all eternity? Like, I'm more, I'm, I'm actually just more, actually just more upset that the, they're just standing around there for all eternity instead of actually being, you know, like, tortured like, um, uh, like, like many people say, like, the, uh, hell should be and all that. So why are, why are they, why are they just, like, left around just, like, there? For nothing else. Why? Just why, actually? Why? I'm more upset about that about that than anything else in the story so far. Time went on, and I grew progressively weaker. I lost the will to eat, and the will to live. My only view from the tower was the clouds through a window high up on the wall. Occasionally, a pigeon would fly in. Oh yeah, that story about the prince and the princess, uh, what was it? Yeah, from, uh, Mel's, uh, story from the first door. Well, from the white-haired girl, Michelle, anyway. Sometimes a butterfly, and how glaring envies have flitted around, free to come in and go as it pleased. And soon, it was spring. Every spring, the church held a festival to pray for the upcoming year's harvest and the people's well-being. I hear the bustle from far below through the windows as everyone rushed to prepare. I hear the flaxen girl's voice, who regained her health from drinking my blood. I heard a brother's voice who betrayed me. I heard the nun's voice who played saint in my stead. I guess, um, uh, in this sense, the nun's voice is meant to be Maria, I guess, in a sense? I heard the barbaric swordsman's voice who chopped off my arm. I heard the Lord's voice, the root of all my suffering. I heard people praising the saintess, though I, the true saint, was locked in the tower. Are people thanking the Lord for his generous donations and miracle medicine, though it all come from me? Propped up in my own suffering, they cheered and clinked glasses of my bloody wine. Those merry, peaceful, cheerful, 
bearded sinner's voices resounded my tower. At noon of the day of the festival, the church bell tolled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and with a twelfth chime, I died. As the bell's last pealing fade to silence, the tower door swung open, standing on the other side of the, uh, were the three men. They must have wanted to drain a little more for me to use in the feast. They arrived at the worst possible moment. The flaxen-haired young man was the first to express his conservation. Why, never wanted her to die. Well, you left her here, so fuck you. Was she not eating? The Lord gave my corpse a casual glance and said stone-faced. Set the tower off. Understood. No one finds out about this. How can you be so calm? You what you've done? <laughs> Pin the blame on me. How nice it must be to re distort reality with panic. The swordsman, who had been silently observing the lore and the, bo the boy conversing, interjected. You were just as guilty as any of us. Not only did they not mourn my death, they argued over whose fault it was. We. There was no regret, no remorse. The young man muttered absent mindedly, I never wanted her to die. Well, what do you expect for th th to happen? Instead of her, like, f for death, it would just be torture? So you didn't want her to die, but you rather her get tortured for the rest of her life? Yeah, fuck you. God damn it. Ugh, God damn it. What did his intentions matter, though? It was this betrayal that had ultimately tethered me to his mansion. The fact that they didn't grieve my death, instead squabbled amongst themselves like filthy rats, was the final straw. How can I not despise them? I don't believe I actually had the power to perform miracles when I was alive. It was all faith. The illusion of belief. I was neither a saint, nor a witch. The blood wine was only affected because people placed their faith in the other saintess. I was only ever human. But then, in that moment, an actual miracle occurred. My father bestowed upon me his power. Or perhaps, perhaps it was the devil. It doesn't even matter at this point who gave it. Who lent me his strength. I was looking down upon my own dead body, my own wretched self. There was nothing beautiful of the pile of bones I had become. I could almost smell the rotting flesh. That was once a saint? I wonder, oh my gosh, I wonder if like, what was it, what was it, uh, Mel's like a sister in this version, honestly, never actually even like, uh, knew what technically happened to her by the end. Like, if he just lied to her the entire time. Or if she technically she did knew, then I'm up. That would kind of maybe, uh, eh. I guess I'll go into, like, I guess what happened with, uh, it happened in that story. Oh, I guess that'd be another thing of, like, well, ruining, I guess, that, but that I'm, uh, another, like, sort of, tr I guess I'm, uh, I guess poetic karma, I guess, in a sense, of, like, the person, like, he was trying to help the most. I'm, uh, like, uh, definitely was, like, uh, trying to get more from him, honestly, or something like that. Yeah, I think I lost my train of thought, honestly, for that, but you, I think you all get what I tr I'm trying to say, right? <laughs> you can almost smell the rotting flesh. That was once a saint? I laughed at the thought. It was absurd. Ridiculous. Infuriating. They would pay. Those who had cast me into this hell. Who had mocked me. Who had done this to me. Who had made a witch out of me? Hatred coursed through me. Revulsion, everyone these these grounds still smiling. They would know just whose dead shoulders their little party was resting on. They wanted so badly to call me a witch. Then a witch I would be. I would kill them. Every last one of them. Place a curse in their souls. And so I made my wish. Most people might consider a curse, but to me. It most certainly was a wish. 
and my father, or maybe the devil, granted that wish. From the garden, there arose a scream. The flaxen-haired young man knew the voice better than anyone. He went deathly pale, darting down the spiral staircase until he reached a window. A young girl was on her knees, vomiting blood in the grass. The young man let out a yelp as he descended the remainder of the staircase. As he reached the garden, he lifted the girl in his arms. Bet she had already perished. We. Most, I'll probably just only just be sympathetic she did not know a single thing's happening, but if she did, uh, good riddance. <laughs> Either way, uh, glad that I'm, uh, he, he, he's sad now. <laughs> Realizing this, he cried to the heavens, saying the one thing he should have kept to himself. The witch killed her. The blood of the witch killed my sister. The wine you're drinking is no medicine. It's, it's the blood of the witch. You're all drinking witch blood. Crushed the loss of his only family, the young man picked up a silver fork and plunged into his own throat, ending his life. Okay. Naturally, there was an uproar. Goblets of wine crashed against the earth in rapid succession as the people holding them fell to the ground and vomited or convulsed. The nun was the first target of their outrage. What she had claimed to be medicine had turned to be blood an unclean substance. The blood of a witch, no less. The servant of the church, the servant of the Lord, had given her followers blood to drink. And at this, their indignation surged uncontrollably. The people surrounded her, tying her up and throwing her to the ground. As a pair to inflict righteous justice upon her, the swordsman soared down the stairs into the garden plunging his blade into anyone standing near the nun. <laughs> There's cries of agony ringing through the church grounds were ear-splitting. I'm just wondering exactly I'm, uh, how I'm, uh, what was it, uh, the stores when I guess the Lord, honestly, get their, like, uh, get revenge in this instance, honestly, the feast. There's no longer a place of God, but hell on earth. Hell built up by the hands of man. Hell painted red with the blood of their brothers. The people armed themselves with anything they could find and went after the man. As much of the beast as he might have been. Yay, the crowding and all that. Uh, they've been slain. He's been slain. He stood a little chance against such numbers. It is the fate of a beast to be exterminated by those he terrorizes. And once he was gone, the nun had no one left to protect her. She too was consumed by their frenzy. All that remained was an inextinguishable inferno. Hysteria and despair. Madness and outrage, and no outlet for it. It was a revolt that made the slaves uprise in the Lord's Manor look like a game. And eventually, they raged for a new target, the Lord. It was only natural, for he was the true villain. After all of this, uh, yeah, he deserves all of the most. There's not even much to comment here, they're just, it's all just happening about how it should be. <laughs> he was the one who had given money, and the witch's blood, to the church. He was the one who profited off of it, and above all, people often resented those who stood above them, particularly in times of unrest. The city resounded with cries to the Lord's head. He looked upon it all from the safety of the observation tower. He could do nothing but watch his domain burned. I can only imagine how painful that must have been. Before long, having seemingly made his peace, he began descending the spiral staircase. He opened the door at the bottom, and revealed himself to the people. Before the door had swung all the way open, before he had a chance to say his final words, Sona ran a blade through his chest. Wee Nice! <laughs> nice! More bloodshed from them. With that, the raging fervor mostly settled down. It was hard to the end of the destruction, while well, it destroyed the entire um, uh, house itself. So like, um, uh, what was it, the house of um, uh, Fata Morgana is literally just um, uh, the quote-unquote church, which looked more like a state then. Hmm. Mere days later, a plague befell the city. Dreadful black spots covered the flesh the infected. They writhed in pain, screaming and vomiting blood. Ghastly howls echoed through the streets as though the whole city had been possessed. It became a cursed land. In their diseased haze, the people muttered again and again, We have been cursed by the witch. In less than a week, the entire city was dead. My body was at the band atop the observation tower. 
and as if to steal the curse away, in their final days, the people shut out all the windows, wrapping the house in darkness. It's possible. That was no miracle either. You can easily explain what happened to them. Locked away for so long in the dirty tower, maybe I caught some kind of disease. And then, when the people drink my blood, they too were infected. Yay! Yay! They deserve it. Hardly anything of the ordinary about that. The first to die, the girl, had already been ill. Her body merely chose the worst possible time to yield to your ailment. That was all that had happened. In indeed, nothing more than a fluke, an improbable stroke of luck, an unbelievably unfortunate accident for the city and those three men, an indescribably unfortunate accident for myself. But I wish to believe it was a miracle. No, it definitely was, doesn't matter. It is. But that even if my blood didn't have healing properties, even if I wasn't a saint, my wish, my curse, was what caused that uprising. That that was my miracle. Granted to me by God or the devil, I chose to believe that. And that my miracle took on its true form thereafter. My curse had brought death upon the three men, but for whatever reason, my rancor was far from sated. They had died, but so what? Death is but a transient agony. It's nothing compared to what I went through. So I made my next wish. I wished for their reconstruction. I wished eternal suffering in their souls. I wished to trap them in a never-ending cycle of pain and hatred. This is my wish for the flaxen-haired young man. He treasured his dear sister, and desired a quiet life, so I wish for him to have just that. I wish for his dearly beloved sister to love him more than anything in the world, for his world to be destroyed by love gone too far. This is my wish for the beast-like man. He was conscious of his tendency for violence, and he yearned to be more human. So, I had his inner beast toned up just a little bit more. I saw to it that he would never be human, so that he would never the peace he so desired. My wish the Lord was more straightforward. He seemed to have a great affection for wealth and authority, so I ensured those were the only things he could ever have. Who needs love or friendship when you could be drowning in power? Once he had lost everything, he saw to be his only companion. Wishes can come true. As long as you always hold fast, never stop wishing, never ever surrender, that they can come true. Eternal suffering in all their souls, and in the cycle of their reconstruction and unavoidable tragedy. Tell me, my dear, do you sympathize with me? Will you curse them with me? Well, curse them, yeah, sure, why not, but uh, I, I kind of want to leave, though. <laughs> Will you take my hand and revile them with me? Oh, is this a um, uh, choice right now? Let me just uh, quickly um, uh, click, click, choice. <laughs> no, 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 not? Okay. Nothing? Okay. Well, I still saved anyway. <laughs> oh, yay, photo negatives. We, whoa, whoa, whoa. This time, my body crashed into the tower stairs. I'm unable to make a noise. The obstruction is less mental and more physical, the excruciating pain. <laughs> it's so intense I, can, I can't even eke out a scream. My vision's distorted, my mind thick with fog. I feel like I'll fall into a bottomless pit if I loosen my grip on my consciousness even slightly. Through the haze, I see my own severed left arm. Oh, like it's actually gone, or like it's an illusion for that, okay. I'm just going to assume it's gone there forever. Oh, wait, yay! Left arm is gone, and now I'm uh, a very sensitive and, like, uh, what is the word? Um, uh, raw, like, right arm is now at the place. Thorn from all of, of Mel's, I'm up, stupid, cowardly talk and all that. Yay, woo. Reflecting a pool of blood, I see my face. Large chunks of flesh peeled off. <laughs> Look at you, trying to crawl up those stairs like a worm. How pathetic. It's like I'm looking at my old self. I can barely form a coherent thought. 
I can't lament her inhuman fate. Can't mourn for her. Or be shocked by the revelation about the three men in their history with them. Pain. It fills every corner of my mind. Every nook and cranny in my body. Well, you've figured it out by now, haven't you, my dear? You'll never make it to me. It's not possible. But it's not your fault. It's not because you're weak. There's simply no one who can bear this pain. You're allowed to give up. To rest. There's nothing wrong with that. The pain. The crushing weight. It's miserable, isn't it? But all you have to do is turn back. And it'll all go away. <laughs> the witch whispers her sweet temptations. You put in a fine effort. There's no shame at all in throwing the towel. Her voice is soft, gentle, pleasant, saccharine. Concede defeat. If I do, it'll all go away. The searing pain spreading from the stump of my left arm. The sensation being perpetually drained of my blood. The miserable solitude of staring at a door that never opens. The laughter I can hear through the window. My miserable wailing. This maddening hatred. I can end it all. That's right. It will all be over. You have the power to make it stop. Make it all stop. It's not even just a memory. No! I can't let that happen. No, I... I have to... Get her back at, at my side! Resolve, determination everywhere, flowing through veins, even when it's, the, the determination is literally just flowing just as heavily as the blood leaking out of you. Uh, we... Regeneration. I, I'll do anything to take her back. Even if it means I end up a thousand tiny scraps of meat. Like, not recognizable at all. I will not give up on her for any reason. <laughs> you won't, will you? Oh, such a beautiful resolve. Want to sacrifice yourself to ha save the girl? Like a hero of legend shining at White Knight. <laughs> Maybe a fairy tale prince. Uh, duh, duh, duh. No. I am no hero. And I am no prince. I am a human. An ordinary man. I don't have any extraordinary potential. I'm not a courageous leader or a charismatic general. I'm just a regular man. In love with a regular woman. Who refuses to lose her. I don't need, either, uh, need any other accomplishments. Only that. That's all I need. Because I'm just a regular man. My one act of resistance. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter how much you cut me up. Nothing changes what I have to do. I have to take her back. Instead of free this mansion, nothing else. I'll never back down on that. And thus the... <laughs> the aura fades away. Arms are no. As long as I can move, I must push forward. I must make my way to the one who waited for me for so long. Up. To the top of the tower. Forward. Ever forward. Ever onward. Dragging my bloody body. Pain the pain no mind. I once more arrive atop the observation tower. I place my hand on the door. Holding up with my lacerated right arm, I take a moment to catch my breath, then lift my head, gaze into the void, and shout her name. Morgana! I pity you. I truly do. You were a saint shackled with an unfathomable fate, and for that I am enraged. As I felt your pain, as I watched your life, I too felt a burning hatred for those three men. If you truly feel that way, then why can't you stay here with me? We're all dead anyway. We reached our ends. Do you honestly think there's no anything more for us? There isn't. The end is the end. So what do you say? The three of us. Me, you, and Giselle. Torture three of them and everyone they cared about. Make them suffer here for all eternity. 
in this house. And that way, you and Giselle can be together forever too. That's not an option. Why not? Because, because hatred only brings you pain. Huh. Oh, that's brilliant. You, you spouting stupid platitudes at me. I can't believe my ears. Say your nonsense moralizing about how hatred does you no good. I won't hear it. I'm doing just fine for myself, my dear. In fact, I never felt been better. I feel wonderful. I mean, sure, that you can have fun with that, honestly, but I'm, uh, they, they, they kind of wanted to leave the mansion itself, but you want to keep them here, so I'm, uh, even if you, even if the hatred part is fine, like, on this point, I don't even care about if you keep your revenge on them forever, all eternally, honestly, all that. Like, honestly, they said they want to get out of the situation, and, um, uh, you stop them for whatever reason. Why? Why? Because you just want to spread that to other people, too? Like, sh like, that's the where I draw the line? You can keep, you can keep them for all eternity, I don't care about that. You could keep them, honestly. I don't really care. But those two, yeah, uh, they wanted to leave so much, uh, and they didn't really do anything to you besides them up. Uh, be there, just agree to a deal, honestly, or help bring you back to life or something like that, apparently. Even though, what was it, like, <laughs> like, what was it? Like, she died, like, she, like, they all died that same day, but, like, that wish carried her all through, but still, somehow, like, Michelle was the one who came to the observation tower and did something that revived her, resurrected her, in a sense? I don't understand that part at all. At all. I do not understand that. I'm doing just fine for myself, my dear. In fact, I've never been better. I feel wonderful. <laughs> Did you think that would be enough to persuade me? Really? Oh, how disappointing. In here, I thought you understood me. Morgana. Why don't you say what you really think? Go right on ahead. Hate them as much as you want. To be honest, that's what I already said. But keep me and Giselle out of it. Yeah? That's literally good. Yeah, point blank, honestly. Why did you say that? I do feel bad. Truthfully. Really. For all the time we spent together, never once did I ask about your life. I was so focused on myself. In the end, I pushed you away. That you did. You wanted to be with Giselle, so you pushed me out. Even before that, you, like, uh, he put he pushed you away, so I'm, uh, there wasn't even an excuse for that back then either way. Besides, I guess, even just the, just only just the fact that I'm, uh, oh, your voice in my head doing all this stuff. It makes it even funnier, honestly, of, like, literally only was just a voice in his head, and they didn't do, like, she didn't do anything else, and he didn't take control of his body or anything else, didn't ask him to do anything mean or bad or anything else, just, like, heard those voices and was just like, nope, no, 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 that's weird, that's bad, let's go away, no, get out of my head, be gone, spirit, be gone, foul demon, honestly, and just perpetuate that a bit more. That's the only thing, honestly. That'd be the only thing that was the reason why he decided to push you away, which is a bit understandable, but the same way I'm, uh, just being a cut in the wound. Just rubbing salt in there. Or I guess more blood, honestly, if you want to go that way. You want to be with Giselle, so you pushed me out. I wish... I wish I'd asked you sooner. It wouldn't change anything, though. One puny man knowing what I went through would hardly be enough to erase the loathing I bear. Yeah, I figured, though. It would have turned out the same regardless. There's nothing you could have done for me. There is nothing. Still, I would like to apologize. If I'd known what you cared in your heart, perhaps I could have chosen my words better. Instead of rejecting you, I could have chosen some other response. Yeah, kind of the same way that happened when, uh, with you and Giselle, so, yeah. It's, uh, a giant, like, foil, honestly, for both sides, for both characters, honestly. That's actually kind of interesting. I love the literary parallels. <laughs> I cannot remain in this house, nor can I allow her to stay either. So I would like to apologize for both my past actions and my present. Well, in that case, open the door, Michelle. I take another moment, another moment to catch my breath, and then I gather my strength into the hand of the door. Blood seeps from my fingertips, slowly trickling down the rough surface. It reminds me of my death. I'm coming for you. Thank you.